It's time for Kev's Quick Hits, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Everybody. The first quick hit today. Every I'm so excited to be sharing this with you because it's something that I've been talking about for quite a while. The United, United Methodist Church is absolutely corrupt. Like, you should not be a by by any means. I don't know your guys' denominations, but if you're a Methodist, you probably shouldn't be one because out of the Associated Press, press the United Methodists repeal longstanding ban on LGBTQ clergy. And so if you did not know, Methodist Church has been going through this kind of rift where about half of them believe that being gay is okay, despite the book of, Levit of Leviticus saying the exact opposite. Um, and then the other half uh, are, are protesting that. Well, now the entire church has, uh, they dealt their delegates repealed their church's longstanding ban on LGBTQ clergy with no debate on Wednesday, removing a rule forbidding self avowed practicing homosexuals from being ordained or appointed as ministers. Delegates voted 692 to 51 at their general conference. The first such legislative gap five years, that overwhelming margin contrasts sharply with the decades of controversy around the issue. So basically what we are now seeing everybody is that there is an entire church, the Methodists that are denying what the Bible says. Like, and so this isn't even about whether or not, like I'll be tolerant of as many gay people or whatever, but Leviticus 18, 22 specifically says a man shall not lay with a man. If he does, it is an abomination. So you are not following scripture to do this. So I'm curious, your guys' quick thoughts on that. And are these even Christians anymore? Are they even Christians? You know, I will say James Lindsay talked about this a few years ago. And in Beneath Sheep's Clothing, they talk about how they did the exact same thing in Russia. What they do is they go into a big organization like the United Methodists, and you take over from the inside. You get a few people on the inside of power and say, guys, like we need to be more understanding about these people. Mm -hmm. And then because each church has has a duty to follow what the overarching organization does. You take over the organization, you take over all of the churches, and then you can pass this kind of 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 you know rule change or whatever you call it. Yeah. Uh, and then every church, because they need to get money from the big organization, has yeah. to fall in line or they don't get money. This is ESG and DEI in churches. Absolutely. David, thoughts? One thing finally makes sense for me. Every day that I come back from work, I pass a church and that church literally has a huge banner on the main road with the LGBTQIA plus uh, flag there saying, you are welcome here. And every time I was confused, I'm like, is this a counter protest to the church or something like that? And it's a Methodist church. And the funniest thing I like, Kev, you know this, I don't know what you're going to show for Kev's quick hits, but today I decided to actually take a video of that flag. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. I literally I took a video of it. I'll pull it oh up here in a God. second. But oh my no, God. it's it's the craziest thing. It's on my phone, so I, you won't be able to really see it too well. But um, oh. no, look, look. that's interesting. It's it's the funniest thing ever. And now it finally clicks to me. But here's the you are. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And so, wow. and so I'm sure something that you might have seen near that, just so everybody knows, too, in case you're wondering, in case you want to avoid the Methodist churches, this is pretty much, uh, by and large, what Look the Methodist, that. this is like their their logo. If you ever see the flame with the cross, it's because they have a, a very interesting view they're of flamers. Well, <laughs> they're, they're flaming gay. No, but they have a very... <laughs> they have a very interesting view of of the metaphor of the flame as it relates to uh, as it relates to the Holy Spirit. Um, interesting. And so and so that's why if you ever see that flame with the cross, that you're pretty much always looking at some level of a Methodist church. But that's the first quick hit. Let's get to the next one. Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider from iCarly, <laughs> Victorious, all the other stuff. If you guys haven't been paying attention uh, to like literally anything in the last five years, Dan Schneider has been constantly under attack rightfully so for at a minimum creepy behavior but just in the last few months a massive documentary called quiet on set came out of which i wow. watched all of it um, which basically detailed a significant amount of sexual abuse among child stars especially at nickelodeon uh, and so according to the daily wire former nickelodeon producer dan schneider is suing the producers of this documentary and the 58 year old tv exec made a, a public apology for his behavior after the documentary first aired which included an interview with schneider's former colleague telling us stories of toxic workplace environment that they saw questionable 
Um, the new lawsuit states that while he takes responsibility for his actions, Quiet on Set was a hit job, which <laughs> insinuated that Schneider would sexually abuse the children who worked on his television shows. And now there's a lot more to this article and you can go look at it if you'd like to, or you can go watch the Quiet on Set documentary. I recommend you doing so. The thing is, is at a minimum, a lot of those uh, point out, a lot of people point out, not even just on Quiet on Set, but they point out how a lot of Dan's shows had a weird amount of, of feet being included. Um, hmm. Interesting. Suggestible, uh, uh, sexually suggestible scenes like Victoria Justice and others in Victorious having lotion sprayed on their face, for, face almost as if it was kind of pornographic. Things like that. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this documentary, how much you've heard about this, but what do you guys think? Is Dan Schneider guilty? Did he do anything? What does Is his lawsuit justified? I mean, I would say knowing what we know about the Hollywood pedophile ring and how it's growing and growing and now, now you know, now we got P Diddy, who's the Epstein of rap. <laughs> I mean, and you got the Weinstein who, you know, who's it's just, I mean, man, all these people are a bunch of perverts. And if you're working with kids all day and you're already a pervert and you're, and you have the power to do stuff like that. And these kids, poor kids don't know, they know they're just shooting random stuff. They're like, okay, cool. Spray this on my face. Like they have no idea. They're kids. Yeah, I think David? that's exactly that. That's exactly it, Fabian. Is that this is like a dream place for him, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that after Nickelodeon, after the whole thing came up, he went to work in Disney. So it, it, the the Duke still gets around kids, and that's very troubling to think. But the most sad thing about this is that I'm, I'm wondering what the hell did he do to SpongeBob? <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you well, know, like <laughs> I don't I don't think he worked as much on SpongeBob, but SpongeBob actually was supposed to be originally an adult show. And if you, this is kind of a mm. little bit of a tangent, but it was supposed to be. If you think about the names in the show, uh, you have the entire the entire name of the town that they lived in was uh, Bikini, Bikini Bottom. Bottom. <laughs> Sandy Cheeks was the name of the squirrel. Mm. Uh, if wow. you think about the Krusty Crab, like there's a lot mm. of. There's a lot of things in that show that, that a lot seem of things. a little bit off. Um, but a lot of things, a lot of things in that show that seem a little bit off. I oh, wouldn't no. say it, but some people would say it. Uh no, but so that's that's when it comes to that one. But wow. but that I just thought that was really interesting. And everybody's talking about the sex abuse. I think the, the thing I really want to talk about with it is the fact there's two things. First, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy among so many leftists to where they will be so outraged about Dan Schneider. But as soon as a drag queen is shaking their ass in front of their kids, oh, good point. they're like, oh, my God, shell out the money, shell out the money. Make it rain on that man dressed as a woman doing sexually explicit acts in front of my child. That's fine. But Dan Schneider shows some feet on iCarly. And that's where they get all mad. Like, yeah. I, both are bad. I'm not going to defend either of them. Both are bad. But stop being double standard. Friend. Exactly. Double standard. And as Bill Maher said, which I can't believe I'm quoting the fucking liberal, but as Bill Maher <laughs> said, where kids are is where these things are going to happen. And that's why we yep. need the most safeguards. If you look at it, look, I'm a Catholic myself. And so I hate bringing up things that make the Catholic church look bad, but you have altar servers, children, they get sexually abused. You have the boy Scouts, young children, they get sexually abused where kids are sexual abusers will be attracted Yep. because they're going to go where kids are. And so in kids entertainment, we have to pay attention to our children and, yep. it, and there's no problem. Oh, like I think it's 90% of Hollywood productions have children in them in some way. So there's no way to avoid it, to avoid yeah. that, that kids are going to be in things, but there is a way to protect them. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, uh, seek Smith uh, explained this a lot to me and opened my eyes to something I didn't know. And exactly what you said, Kev is right. They go to where children are, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, what is it? The, where you're young, you go in the forest, um, whatever they're called, where you go <laughs> and you have like a, somebody trains you on like how to start fires and stuff. Oh, like the boy like scout. Boy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The boy scout. And there was a lot of them in the boy scout. And I guess the boy scout yeah. had their own hush hush thing and so they got ousted. That's they did. So, so the boys, so I'm an Eagle scout. So I went through all the boy scouts. I was in it for like 12 years. Um, and so, and so I always make the joke and this is a terrible joke, but I make it, I'm both a Catholic and a boy scout. No one ever touched me. What the heck? Where's, <laughs> where's my, where's my class action? But, they want you, <laughs> <laughs> must have not been cute enough, but, 
But <laughs> but no, that's exactly what it is. Is where kids are is where they're going to go, and it's not like I mean, right now we could talk about low birth rates and everything, but we don't need to get into that tangent. But the thing is that we're always still going to have kids, and so the best we can do is look out for them. And so don't be a naive little bitch and pretend like somebody's not going to be a creep towards your children. Just saying, yeah. keep an eye on them. And speaking of keeping an eye on them, that brings me to my next quick hit, which is out of the post millennial, a Christian conservative family is shocked to find that a trans woman was playing the evil queen after paying $300 for a dinner with Disney characters to which I asked who the hell would pay $300 to have <laughs> dinner with a Disney character. But according to the story, a conservative Christian family spent that evil. much money. I don't know if we're going to, we can watch some of the video. Let's watch the video. Let's just do that. <laughs> Great video here. Evil Queen. Too. Oh my god. My also my favorite. We are so much. Oh yeah. That was yeah. That was so, a little weird. So it's a, a conservative Christian family's paid that much money to uh to have a meet and greet dinner for their daughter at Disney World and were shocked when the evil queen was played by a man. When the father of the family spoke to a manager at Disney about casting choice, he learned that the man was actually transgender. The manager reportedly told the father that the evil queen was being played by a woman who, quote, was excited, so excited to get the role. When he <laughs> pressed and wanted to know if the individual was a biological male, the manager told him that he could not answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> and because you asked it, you're a bigot, basically. But yeah. Disney, Disney went gender neutral in 2021 when they removed, quote, all gender references from guidelines for casting. Wow. And the goal was to improve inclusivity at the park. After that, visitors to Disney were faced with men playing women's parts, such as instances where the role of fairy godmother's apprentice was played by a male. Hmm. So what do you guys think about this? Uh, a biological male is playing the part of the evil queen and a family paid $300 to have dinner with it. Um, I have my own thoughts, but I'll get to those. What do you guys think? <laughs> Dave, you take this one, man. I'm so flabbergasted. <laughs> this just reminds me of like, for some reason, I'm shooting blanks, but you guys could probably help me here. Is that like they they always make fun of this of like some movie that's going to play and like the main character is like, a, you know, some character from history and they're a white but they're, they're playing them as black. <laughs> this mm. is like an extension of that because yeah. it's essentially cultural, it's cultural appropriation. <laughs> cultural appropriation, exactly. I mean, like, listen, you got you got chicks or you got roles for chicks being taken over by dudes. And I don't hear the feminists coming out and being all angry about that. So that's because men are I'm better confused. women than men are better women than women are. Yeah. We're so much listen, better than women. She's the man. <laughs> <laughs> about that i will say this the best the best straight guy on television is played by a gay guy barney from how i met your mother and the best <laughs> gay man is played by a straight man the guy from uh modern family the the yeah the, fat the big dude, fat the fatter guy is. yeah he's actually straight and i'm like this is this is the opposite it's pretty incredible but i <laughs> no, mean yeah you know i think you make a point there though fabian and the fact that it's acting if you're good at it do that yeah. But I do, but I don't think the thing is is when it comes to this instances I don't think it's about acting I think it's about the inclusivity stuff and oh, yeah. and and Absolutely. to where my my problem comes with this is not about the transgender thing I mean we could go back to the whole conversation about how they're going to be where kids are the groomers the pedophiles everything like that that's why we've seen if you look at it there's constant constant arrests of child pornography charges and molestations from people that worked from for Disney from low level park employees up but i digress when i bring up that point the thing is is that if this family paid three hundred dollars to have three hundred dollars which which i i blame the family first off for paying that <laughs> yeah, much for yeah, a exactly. stupid flipping dinner for a meet and greet um mm. but three hundred dollars to play with an actor they should have at least been told that the evil queen was going to be a king pretending to be a queen like they should have been at least told that like from a business transaction standpoint, like yeah. outside of all the transgender stuff, even if he, if he was outwardly like new for a fact that he was a biological male, if he wasn't suffering from delusion, then, <laughs> then he, they should have been told like they, for paying that much money, you should know exactly what you're buying. You should know the product. I mean, like if you, if you buy, uh, if you buy a, a, something and it, whatever is inside is not what was advertised you're going to sue for false advertising and that's exactly what happened here so 
Um, that's my thoughts on that. But let's get to some a little bit happier news. John Rich, uh, John Rich, the this is the next quick hit, everybody. John Rich, the singer from Big and Rich, just about fifty percent of that organization. Um, <laughs> he came out, and I don't know if you guys saw, but there was this the during all these protests that we've been covering. Um, there was frat bo- frat bros that came out and they held up an American flag. I don't mm-hmm. know if we can get uh, this tweet up here from John Rich, um, but they held up an American flag and John Rich, among others, came out and said that they were go- that he was willing to uh, to host a concert for these young boys. And I know that there's actually I thought there was a picture with this tweet. I must be wrong. I can pull out. We can find the other tweet somewhere. Maybe it's, I think it's, if you scroll down, you can see the boys, <laughs> Phi Kappa Phi men defended their flag. And uh, mm. yeah, there you can see it. And so there was even a GoFundMe that was created um, and it says, throw them a rager. And they've raised <laughs> almost $200,000. Wow. They've, they've raised half a million now, by the way. Really? Oh wow. my God. Last time I checked. Yeah. And this is actually my neighboring states, UNC Chapel mm-hmm. or Chapel Hill. Right. And uh, this was awesome to see because for a while we were hitting this rhetoric especially on x is that uh, white people jews they're different no it's not it's literally at the end of the day there's people that hate america and there's people that love america and as you can see these young men over here which just gives me so much hope in this uh generation that i always lose hope in yeah. um come out and protect the values that didn't look i immigrated to the united states at eight years old and by the time I was nine years old, I knew that the American flag should never touch the ground, similar to how the Israeli flag is. So mm-hmm. to see these boys go out there, they're being like they're throwing crazy stuff, not crazy mm-hmm. stuff, but they're throwing water at them, chicken nuggets, I heard at some point. So and they're standing there. They're like, I'm not going to let this uh, flag touch the ground. I'm going to rip this Palestinian fake Palestinian flag off the pole that you guys put on here. So disgraceful. And and you know, keep this American flag above the ground until we figure out how we can get it up again. You know, this, this, this reminds me, and I don't, I'm going to coin this phrase. I haven't heard it coined anywhere else, but I'm going to say this, this is the Gen Z Iwo Jima. So <laughs> I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with the Iwo Jima, yeah. but uh, it's, a, it's, I mean, I know you guys are, but it's, it's an incredible picture by Marines. And I forgot on what Island. And I read the book um, when I was younger and I, and I forget it, but it was somewhere I believe it was in Japan or something like that. It was, yeah, um, it was an island off Japan. Would, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty incredible. And they, there's oh. a st- whole statue and everything of it in D.C. It's like it uh, it's on it's on a hill. It's actually about like 15 minutes outside of the D.C. proper, but it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful statue to go check out. There's pictures of it, of course, too. But I absolutely see that. I think the thing that's actually beautiful about this, um, there's there's two things. First off is so one of the boys who I believe was either the president or the or kind of one of the spokespeople for the fraternity. His name was Alex Jones. Um, <laughs> ironically and he came out on wow. twitter as well and i read it earlier today i couldn't find the tweet again i'm sure if i looked it up i could um but he came out and it was a long thread where he basically said in it he was like you know i have i he was like i didn't do this because i have a particularly educated opinion on israel or palestine he was like i think any loss of life is sad um, he's like, I don't shame anybody for utilizing their First Amendment, the Palestinian people, protesters or the Israel. Um, he was just like, what I know is that I love my country and I love what it stands for. And anybody trying to disrespect that, um, that's what I have a problem with. It wasn't yep. he wasn't trying to make any kind of a political statement on either side. He and his brothers were simply trying to protect America and what it stands for. What I find interesting, however, is even despite that he says that. So he's by no means claiming that he's a conservative. I mean, he kind of is, but he he is coming out and saying it's not about political partisanship by any means. The only people that came out and supported the GoFundMe that that pushed the idea of John Rich coming out, being a celebrity and coming out and saying he would. The only people were those that are on the conservative side. What does that tell you? Yeah. Yeah. It just oh. uh, furthers the whole point that these people just hate America. Right. And and in the last I'll ask you guys in the last five years between the right and the left in America, who has chanted the loudest that they hate America, hate American values, that it's a white supremacist country based on absolute racism and everything like that? It's been the left. Well, it's sad. <laughs> no, you know, it's sad because 
so the left is obsessed with being uh with being intelligent right you know they're they're obsessed with being smart and what they've done is they've told kids if you're smart then you have to do what we tell you yeah but if you're smart you would think critically about anything any anybody who tells you do what i say and don't ask questions because that just doesn't make a lot of sense no absolutely and the I left think, took me out right there sorry fellas. <laughs> the left took yeah because you called him because know, right? you called him up but david is absolutely i mean fabian you're right too but david was absolutely right is that people hate america and speaking of people that hate america uh it's both the legibetica people and the british and we have a little bit of both in this next clip and educators this is a triple whammy take a look and a listen to this clip libs of tiktok for our final quick hit everybody boom boom did you know we deliver lgbt plus workshops for schools hi i'm jack i'm the workshops leader here at Papanoni. i work directly with schools to deliver super fun age-appropriate workshops to primary school kids from across the uk okay <laughs> from introducing ideas about family diversity to learning about the history of pride our sessions allow a safe space for children to learn and understand about LGBT plus identities. We encourage children and teachers to ask questions, share their experiences and thoughts to ultimately help our next generation grow up, not just to be more accepting, but to celebrate difference. If you're interested in some workshops for your school, just drop me a line at info at popanoli.com. Jesus. Oh my God. What do you guys think? Are you guys going to drop him a line at info? <laughs> at Pop and Ollie wait, wait. <laughs> His shirt says Ollie, Jack, they, them. And it has a rainbow and he has a pink hat and he has these crazy like butterfly looking glasses. Like <laughs> what, what, what could this person teach you other than how to eat soy? I don't understand. Like, what, what's he going to teach you? I don't know. Maybe how to lower your testosterone count. <laughs> here's here's the funny thing to me is that we just saw an updated new flag for LGBTQ and all that stuff, right? So, what? How do they exactly teach all of this stuff? They have to come in what every two, three weeks and update the kids. Like, hey, listen, it's kind of a genius new business thing. plan. Is, like, I'm not is. gonna lie, it's a genius retention. business plan. If you keep changing all this shit. And then you're like, oh my God, you gotta learn it. You gotta learn <laughs> Ollie, it. Ollie, Ollie, where are you, Ollie? You gotta you gotta teach the kids about the new stuff. <laughs> then you're gonna constantly, I mean, you're gonna you're creating your own revenue stream by basically saying you're a bigot if you don't learn it, but we're also gonna change it on you every three For 10 weeks. a month. Like, you can't be <laughs> a month. Yeah. If you don't pay, you're a bigot. Why the I don't I know that this was in the UK, but here's something that will make you feel pretty bad is that your US taxpayers' money is actually going to similar programs, especially I just saw in the recent bill that they passed is that they subsidized $1.5 million to an organization for LGBTQ kids' clothing so the kids at schools can get clothes that are LGBTQ friendly, which is like your target tuck friendly yeah. BS stuff and whatnot. <laughs> Look, I got, a, I got a way that you can save a lot of money just. If, I mean, if you're going to go through all that trouble, just give the clothes that are made for a, a second grader, give them to fifth graders. It fits the exact <laughs> same purpose. It's going to be super tight. I mean, that's there easy. You know. See see what I mean? The government Problem hired solved. me. I, I can save you some money. Uh, the government doesn't like to save money. No. You know that. <laughs> just wants to collect your money and burn it. <laughs> they like to steal your money. Absolutely. But yeah, that's what's happening in American classrooms just as much as it's happening globally. And in reality, I believe it's a spiritual war. Um, one of which, and that's why we started Quick Hits with the gays infiltrating the United Methodist Church, and they're also infiltrating your schools. And so the reality, maybe consider just getting out of, of anything government, <laughs> or anything government funded, anything government subsidized. The CIA is going to spy on you no matter what. The schools are going to turn you gay, and your church might even try to do that too. And